Well, the first row of the k coefficients is used to solve for ez1. So we can account for the left boundary condition by making sure the first equation in our global system of equations turns out to just be ez1 is equal to 0. To achieve this, we should set all the coef k coefficients in the first row equal to 0, except the very first one, which should be equal to 1, since it's multiplied by ez1. So in other words, we can add to our code k, and the first row should be equal to 0, except the very first one, because that one's going to be multiplied by ez1, that should be equal to 1. So then the left side of the equation is just 1 times ez1. And then we can set the first value of the right-hand side array equal to 0. So we can say b at the first value is equal to 0. Now the first equation from our global system of equations will be ez1 is equal to 0. But we're not quite done yet. The next thing we need to do is make sure that whenever ez1 shows up in any of the other equations in our global matrix equation, we make sure that we will also get a value of 0. All of these coefficients in the first column, so if you know this is our k matrix, here's ez1, ez2, and so forth, all of these values in the first column will be multiplied by ez1. So we can take into account that ez1 is equal to 0 by setting all of these values, coefficients, in the first column of the k matrix equal to 0, except for the very first one right here, which we already said we need to have equal to 1. Then we'll make sure to get a 0 anytime there's a coefficient multiplied by ez1. So we can take care of this by having k for 2 to nn, so that's this column here, except for the very first one, for 1, is equal to 0. Now since the ez field at known 1 is known, we could even completely eliminate ez1 from the global system of equations. This would reduce the size of the matrix equation because we could just get rid of the top row of the equation and also get rid of the left column of the k matrix. This would make the code more computationally efficient. For now though, let's not worry about reducing the size of our matrix equation. We'll keep it the same size so we can solve for easy at all of the nodes of the computational domain, including the easy component at node 1. Go ahead and initialize the B array in your code if you haven't already, and also program the left boundary condition. Make sure you comment it so we know what that part of the code is doing. And so program that into your code.